Hello everybody! Welcome to another Saturday Anything Goes. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. We've been a little wet today with some thunderstorms, but didn't last long and now the air just smells so fresh and clean. Anyway, what are we about tonight? Well, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. I love 3D projects and, you know, with the shelter at home um, for elderly people, I hate calling myself an elderly person, but let's face it, <laughs> I am over 65. Anyway, I haven't been able to get out to get a, a manicure. Our nail salons were closed for quite a bit, and even though they're now open, I just don't want to, you know, risk anything. So I've been doing my um, nails at home. I need to redo mine. <laughs> they're getting a little shabby. But uh, I was getting tired of, like, trying to carry nail polish and nail tools and stuff from one room to the other and I thought I need a manicure caddy and so I sat down and I designed this cute little manicure caddy now this is just my prototype I don't have it decorated at all um, but we're going to make one just like it and it holds some fair sized nail polish bottles I also have some minis in here um, and I even have room for my base coat, top coat, and even some nail oil. I love being able to have my um, files and even my little clippers in here as well. And I can pick it up by the handle. It's plenty sturdy. It's not um, wobbly or tipping to one side or another. So that is going to be our project tonight. Be sure and say hello if you've joined so I can give you a shout out. And let me just go to my page here so that I can see you all when you pop in. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and um, get started on this. I'll move this out of the way for now. And bring in the supplies that we're going to be using. And I see everybody popping on. Hello, Betty. Hi, Kathy Brown and Kathy Sanford. Hi, Linda. So nice that um, you guys could join me tonight. All right. So we're going to mix some old with the new. Um, for the new, I'm using one of our new in colors, Just Jade. And um, I have a piece that measures 10 inches by 12 inches, and that will be for the base of the box. And by the way, the base of the box is reinforced, so that helps make it sturdy. And then our handle, we're going to have a piece that is 1.5 by 12 inches. And to decorate, we're going to be using some of our best dressed DSP, and this is kind of the old of the project because this is from the last catalog. And I'll talk you through it all and give you the measurements and everything um, as we go along. So the first thing I want to do is work with my base. I'll bring in my trimmer, and we're going to make some score marks. So I'll get my cutting blade out of the way. Actually, I both of them because I like using my bone holder to score. And let me make sure you guys can see this. So we're going to make score marks at one and a half inches and three inches on all four sides. So that part's pretty easy. That's my one and a half. And there's my three. And you're going to end up with a finished base that is four by six. So I'll just keep repeating these measurements. On all sides. So is anybody doing anything fun and exciting this weekend? Going maybe hiking out into the great outdoors where there aren't people you have to worry about not wearing masks? That's the only thing that really... I worry about when we have to go anywhere. We went to the doctor's office yesterday. Hubby had to have a little um, procedure 
and um, we're in the waiting room and they've done pretty good at not having too many people in the waiting room. It's a fairly large waiting room. Um, but a gentleman walked in and came into the waiting room and sat down and he did not have a mask on and I about had a conniption fit. Luckily, they called him back right away. But I was like, oh my gosh, mister. <laughs> All right, so I've got my score marks, one and a half and three inches. Now we'll just fold and burnish on all of those. I think what I'll do is just start carrying an extra mask around with me and offering it to somebody. Of course, as prickly and as political as masks have gotten, I could start a ruckus, but safety is important, especially with all hubby's underlying um, conditions. All right. And this paper, the, this cardstock is a really nice weight. Okay, so I've scored and folded. This is going to be my base here. But we've got some trimming to do. And let me bring out my pencil and just show you all what pieces we're not going to need. So, we're going to get rid of this piece, this piece, and this piece. The same over here. So we're getting rid of these bottom two pieces and the one that's above. And then we're going to rotate it and do exactly the same. Getting rid of just the corner pieces. And that will leave us with a flap, which we need to assemble our box, right? Okay. So, sorry if you can't see everything. I didn't want to... Uh, have the camera up too high so when we start working with the insides you'd be able to see it. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start trimming away these pieces that I don't need. Oh, I did a lousy job there. Hang on. Gotta get rid of my score mark. There we go. And then same thing here. We're going to get rid of this piece. So we're left with that. All right. So we're going to repeat that over here on this side as well. I know it's nice that um, some families are finally able to get together and see each other, which is always a nice thing. All right, so we've got one side with those three uh, squares taken out. Now, get over there, you. We need to cut up to make our flaps. So I'm just going to cut up this side and this side. And then I'm going to go ahead and wedge it, take away some of the bulk. You can fold things under if they get to be a little too bulky. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my flaps down just a little bit. So just, I'm taking maybe a quarter inch off. And then the last thing is, on this bottom one, I also am going to go ahead and wedge these sides. And that'll make it lay flatter. So that's what we're going to end up with when we're done. Alright, let's go ahead and do the other side. Come on, you get up. to sharpen my scissors. There we go. I'll just wedge that while I have it here. And then I'm going to cut this box away. And 
give it a little wedge for my flaps. And then, like I said, I'm also going to trim my flap down about a quarter of an inch. Let me tidy this up. Do the same on this side. And I think just for quickness, I'm just going to cut all the way up here since that's going to be a flap anyway. Save yourself time wherever you can. Part away, wedge out our flaps, and trimming them down, and finish wedging this part. Okay, so we've got both ends done. On the sides here, the only thing I need to do is I'm going to wedge my sides because these are the fold over part, the reinforcing part. So we don't. We want them to lay nicely. We don't want them to kind of bunch up in the corners. Okie doke. That's all there is to that. Now we can start putting it together. I'm going to bring out my tear and tape. And we're going to handle our flaps the same way we always do when we're making a box. So going to put a couple pieces on each flap on the outside part of the flap now kidoki And then, once we're done with our flaps, because these are fold over, we don't want to put the tape out here, so I'm going to flip it over. We want the tape to be there so that we can fold that in. And I'm also going to take just a little bit off of these. That way when we fold them over, we know they're not going to drag the bottom. And I'll do it on these end pieces as well. That way we make everything very neat and tidy. So you don't have to trim a lot. And I wouldn't trim a whole lot because remember, this is what's going to help strengthen our box. So there we go. And now I can put the tape on all of these. So this is probably the longest part of making this, is putting all of the adhesive down. You certainly could use, if you still have some fast fuse, that would work well. You could use the liquid glue. Just about any adhesive of your choice, but I would recommend it be a strong adhesive. Because we don't want our box to come apart. Some of those bottles of nail polish can be quite weighty. Okay, so there we go. Give these a good press. And the first thing we're going to do is work with our flaps. Because we want to hide them with the pieces that fold over. Trying to always look up there and make sure I'm staying in frame so that you guys can at least see what I'm doing. So I'll work with this side first. And just like with any other box, what you're going to do is turn that flap in and marry it up. Just like that. And the same with this side. Turn that flap in. Line it up and stick her down. Oop. Where's my little? There it is. So I'll just take the tape off the remaining two flaps. And 
and same procedure. Just marry up, <clears throat> pardon me, the edges and stick them down. All right, now we can go ahead and work on these, our reinforcing flaps. And actually, I think I'll put the short ones down first. Put the short ends down first. So I just took it off, fold it over, and stick her down. This also helps the inside of your box look very neat and tidy when you're reinforcing because it tends to hide those flaps. <clears throat> All right, one more to do. And there we go. Now, we could have put, I guess, our DSP on before we put this all together uh, while it was still flat. Um, but I like to do mine afterwards because I have been known to stick DSP up upside down <laughs> if I try to do it before I put my box together. So let me bring out the DSP that we're going to use. And you'll need four strips. You are going to need, actually you'll need six strips because our handle, we will also put DSP on. So you will need two strips that are just shy of four inches by one and a half inches. So those are going to go on our ends here. And then you'll need one that's just shy of six inches and that measures one and a half inches. And make sure my one and a half is right. Actually, it's more like one and a quarter, guys. Sorry. Um, so I cut them down to one and a quarter so that I'd have a nice little border of the cardstock there. To stick it down, I'm going to use liquid glue. That way I can wiggle it around and get it exactly where I want it. And when I put this down, you'll be able to see there is just a thin border of that Just Jade cardstock sticking through. Come on, get in there. All right. And so we'll just do that all the way around. And we will have our base decorated. And then we're going to move to the inside. Oop, I think I cut that one a little short. Oh well, it'll be all right. I just thought, um, I know this paper is retired, but I thought it was perfect to put on a nail po uh, polish caddy. And it'll look pretty sitting at my desk. All right, there we go. So we have our box, pretty little box. And I could just stick the handle on and, you know, put the nail polish and stuff in there. But if I don't have enough to fill it up, it's all kind of sliding around and, um, you know, shifting the weight. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to be a bit more stable than that. Hang on, looking for my lid. So, I came up with, and let me just take out my nail polishes out of this one so I can show you. I mean, it's got a lot in it. What I did was I created this little um, section that divides everything. And it's a little wobbly, but once you get the nail polish in there, it straightens it out. And the other thing I like about this is you can really customize it. I cut um, slots at every inch. So there's a slot here that I'm not even using. I left that out so that I could ha make a little place to store my manicure tools with. Uh, so this is super, super easy. I'm not going to remake it just because it is that easy. But I will talk you guys through it. 
So you would need one strip that measures, this is going to be that almost just shy of six inches by one and a quarter. All right, so that is going to be our center strip. Then what I did, I measured up half an inch on this side, and you can kind of probably still see the little pencil mark I made. So I measured up because you don't want to cut all the way through it. Then I cut at every inch, and I just put, again, I measured it. I put a little dot where the line should be. So that's my center um, divider. Then I made four, although it, you can do five, um, that are shorter than that. So these are going to be, for the width of the box, just under four inches. And on this one, again, I measured up one inch from the bottom, but I decided only to make one cut. I could have made three cuts, but it was too hard for me to divide um, three into almost four and come out with a number that was workable. Plus, this way I can, like, if I did it at uh, that uh, two-inch mark, that meant I could get two of my minis in the same um, slot. So, that's what I did. These are all four, almost four inches by one and a quarter inch. Measure up half an inch, and then I cut it at in the center, which is about two inches. And I did four of those. And then to put it together, it's easier to do if you have it in the box. Otherwise, it will wobble everywhere. But... You want your slots going up here, and for your dividers, you want your slots coming down. So, I just kind of wiggled them into place. Just work with it. Pretty easy to do. And they fit in there nicely. Now, I did not use cardstock for this. You really need something that's a little bit heavier than cardstock. Um, our DSP packets, uh, the 12 by 12 packets, come with a backer sheet to give them a little uh, strength that is heavier than cardstock, and I simply cut up one of those. All right, that's what I used. Another way that you can stabilize the box, because we have reinforced sides, works great, but my bottom, I also want it to be reinforced. <clears throat> so I just took that same backer sheet and I cut a piece that is three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And it fits right in the bottom. You can glue it down if you want to. I didn't, um, but you certainly can. And then when you put this in there, you've got several layers of things that are really making your box stronger. Okay? All right. Before I finish that off, though, we have a handle that we need to do, and then I want to show you uh, how easy it was to make my little tool section. So for our handle, I cut a piece of the Just Jade that is one and a half inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to take out my little piece there because I'm not going to glue this on the outside. I'm actually going to stick it down on the inside just like that before I do though I have cut because this paper is six by six um, I had to cut two six six inch sections but I actually like that because this is a directional pattern now it means that my pattern will be the right way because I can flip this one around no matter which side I'm looking at so that actually worked out in my favor. So let me just glue these down real quick. And again, you can use whatever adhesive you like. Uh, if you're gluing um, a thin DSP to cardstock, you can even use things like snail. So it doesn't have to be a super, super heavy weight. And I cut this down just a bit so that I've got a border. So this is, these panels are, come on, Linda, um, five and seven eighths 
by one and three eighths. I think that's right. One and three eighths. Oh, let's see if my thing's one and a quarter. No, that wouldn't be right. It would be one and one eighth. Okie dokie. Now with this, it's going to leave a little gap at the top, but I, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So, let me get my bone folder here and just press these down well, because we are going to be curving them for our handle. So we want to make sure everything is secure. Like I said, I am going to be um, gluing them on the inside. Let me just make sure that is glued down. And to help my curve a little bit, because it's pretty stiff, I'm just going to take my bone folder and very gently holding down there, just give it a little curve that way. And it won't fight you as much. All right, so we're going to find the middle. Oh my gosh, look at that. How many times would I be able to line something up like that? <laughs> Too funny. I think I'm going to turn it this way so it's not exactly. Well, it's going to be exactly. No, nope, we'll do it that way. All right, that's just my OCD kicking in. So I need to put adhesive in this section. And I want a strong adhesive. So again, I'm going to turn to my tear and tape. And because our handle has to really support it, I'm actually going to put three pieces of tear and tape on each side. All right, so I've got that. And I'm just kind of holding this down and figuring out where it needs to go. Come on, don't stick to me. Okay, last one. I'm going to give those a good press. And I would do this, I mean, you notice I've taken everything out. I don't even have the dividers in. And that's because I want to be, I don't want anything kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to just going to put this down about in the center and give it a firm press. And then I'll do the same with this one. All right. Then I'll bring this over. Eyeball on to make sure, and now I'm going to go in and give those both a firm press just to be sure. Okay, so there we have our box with our handle, we've got our dividers in, and they will look a little messy until you start, you know, putting stuff in them, but they'll straighten out. So I can put in my little mini nail polishes right there big one there just to go in and fill these up and like I said I have room for my base coat my top coat and even my nail oil just like that and see how well the dividers keep them in their spots and it helps stuff not wiggle around. So I don't have to worry about all the weight suddenly shifting to one side or the other. Oh, but you know what I forgot to do? Forgot to put in my bottom piece. And I do want that in there. So give me just a second. And like I said, you can glue that piece in if you like. Not worried about it. I know all the weight of my nail polish bottles is going to hold it just fine. 
Aren't these colors pretty? Oh, I have so many pretty colors to try. Oops. Okay. And even though I have um, some of my sections are underneath the handle, there's plenty of room for me to put my hand in there and grab them out. Okay, so we've got that, right? And like I said, if you wanted to put in one more divider, you would have four more slots that you could put even more nail polish in. But what I wanted to do is I wanted something that would hold my nail tools. Because if I just put them like there, yeah, that's not going to work. So here's what I did. I took another piece of the Just Jade. And this one measures six inches actually six six and a quarter by three all right six and a quarter by three and i'm gonna glue down this piece of dsp which is an eighth of an inch shorter all the way around i just thought this pink would really complement all the pink that's in um, the perfume bottles and it kind of breaks up the green. I didn't want to have just another piece of solid green. All right, so we'll get that all stuck down. And now you can use liquid glue for this, but I wanted it to dry pretty quick. So I'm actually gonna use tear and tape because what I'm gonna do is curve this around and make a circle of it and I'll put a piece of tear and tape right along the inside edge here oh I got sticky on there and actually before I do that sorry before I take my backing off again I'm going to see if I can give it a bit of a curve break the fibers a little bit to make it easier to curve around. It's a little bit harder with a piece this size because my bone folder is not long enough, but we'll make it work. Okay, now I can take this off, bring it around, and this is why kind of breaking the fibers helps because you're able to go in and curve it and then match up your pieces and press them down just like that and then this little caddy will fit right in that slot one of the things I noticed though when I was putting it in is it it tends to if the weight shifts it will pull it over so how do we get rid of that? Well, we're just going to glue two sides of it. And I want my tape side to be to the inside. So what I'm going to do is take some glue dots and I'm going to put them here where it touches here and where it touches there. You also could use tear and tape. But because I have a cylinder I'm working with, I just thought it would be easier to use some glue dots. So I'm just gonna put three or four on there. And actually, I take that back because this is only an inch and a quarter. I think I'm just gonna put three in a row. All right, so I have it there. So that's gonna stick to there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick those down now. All right, so I've got it in there, and I'll just take my bone folder and really rub it in there. Yep, that's not going anywhere. And I could could have left it there, but if things start topping this way, my glue dots might start to separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put just a few more over on this side where it touches the panel. And I can just pull this away, 
Pardon me if my head gets in the way. Just put a few there, and again, using my bone folder. Now it's sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So now I can put in all of my tools, and it's not going to flop around. Well, guess what, gang? We are done. That's how easy it is to make a nail polish patty. And it looks so cute. I really like it. And it's very sturdy. I mean, I am bouncing it up and down. Sorry if I'm making anybody woozy. But nothing moved. I still have an open area back here that I could stick more nail polish in. Or, you know, whatever I happen to have. Um, but yeah. Customizable. I think it's cute from all the different sides. Let me see if I can tip this over a bit. Rest it against something here. Nope, that's going to be too big. Let's do maybe that. Nope, nothing's really going to hold it, I don't think. Anyway, you get the general picture. All right, let's see who else joined us. Hi, Anne from Massachusetts. Hey, Danette. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, Amy. All right. Well, that is it for tonight, gang. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you'll give it a whirl. I mean, you can use it for lipsticks as well. Uh, you could fit two lipsticks in each one of these, so you can make a lipstick caddy as well. But uh, so it can definitely be multi-purpose. All right, gang, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, get back to your regularly scheduled Saturday night. Um, I hope you again enjoyed the project. You'll give it a try. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment below and I will be more than happy to get back with you. If you have any suggestions for future projects, also leave me a comment. Always looking for ideas on things um, to make. So until next week, we'll meet again, same time, same station. Um, I will bid you all a good night and remember, stay safe. Check on your neighbors. Wash your hands. Good night, y'all.